How's it going my friends? Back with another video today. Today's going to be something that I really want you guys to maybe take the notes out for. Um, if you guys have any interest in building a business or you know, taking your business to the next level, I really think a lot of this stuff is going to be super helpful to you guys. I just have wanted to make this video for a long time, but I wanted to make sure that it was correct and coherent because it's a complicated subject to talk about, but this is something that's going to be super helpful to a lot of you because Sarah and I are still in the in the process of figuring these things out, but we have already figured out a lot of things that have been working, and I think that pretty much anybody in the photography world or the art world in general, creative work in general, can really help uh, you know take your business to the next level. So. We're going to talk about creating a an air of value, okay? And how to increase the idea of the value of your business without trying gimmicky tactics, okay? So basically, this is one of the most important things, guys, is, you know, I, I know that especially when you look around when you first start photography you see these people there are people in the industry charging you know getting ten thousand dollar weddings you know going to corporate shoots and charging you know ten thousand dollars for two hours um you know selling crazy amounts of high ex expensive books um you know just there's a, a level there's a cream of the crop level in all artistic fields where people start to be to seem to just gravitate and just attract those really good high-end clients and you don't know how they do it and it's frustrating and you're here you are competing on price and i want to kind of go over those things that help you help set you apart and create that perceived value that's actually going to take your business to the clients or attract the clients to your business that you really really want so the thing is guys is you have to make sure that you're thinking about business from a creative standpoint. And I know that there's this stigma about business for creative type people. I hate that word, like, oh, I'm a creative or I'm an artist. I, I hate referring to it, but that's really what it is. If you're a creative type person, you're running a creative business, um, you, you know, you're an artist. And you need to start thinking about business from an artistic standpoint as well. Because guys, business is one of the most creative things I mean, out there, it really is. You're constantly solving problems. You're constantly coming up with new solutions. You're constantly having to think outside of the box. And if you just embrace that rather than trying to run from it, you will really start to see your stuff grow by leaps and bounds and it'll start to be fun rather than something you're shying away from. Business really can be fun and it can be very creative if you think about it in the right way. So perceived value, guys. This is what somebody thinks about your business even before you talk to them first. Now, obviously, the idea is when somebody comes in contact with your brand, you want to make sure that they're perceiving it as something that's elite, something that's very high quality, something that de you know demands a high price. And so you want to even get to the point now, you know, Sarah and I are kind of to the point now where we have weeded out. We still get emails from people like, you know, and their first email is how much do you cost? But we're getting a lot more inquiries and a lot more clients where price is not the first factor. And that's really where you want to be. And I, that's where I want to help, you know, help you guys get to basically. So first thing you need to remember is perceived value does not necessarily equal reality. Okay. So what somebody thinks about something does not necessarily mean that that's not what it really, or that's what it really is. Marketing and branding really is about creating the type of story that you want and not lying to people, but attaching a feeling and kind of implanting a message into their head before you even make contact with them as soon or before you personally make contact with them. As soon as they make contact with your brand or the outer circles of it, you want that idea to be planted in their head that, hey, this is something of value. This is something that commands a high price. And this is something that I should respect. So one thing that's really important is it, it, I want to start this video off by getting you guys your thinking aligned with with what I'm trying to say here. So a perfect example, right, is I, I was just thinking this before I started the video. So I'm recording this with a, with a Rode VideoMic Pro, okay, that's on the top of it. So when somebody, if you go look at their marketing materials, when somebody's going out to buy a, a vlogging microphone cam or some or vlogging microphone, they're not necessarily, the people who are commanding the highest prices and the good brands that are trusted are not necessarily selling you the actual microphone. What they're actually selling you 
is the uh, end outcome or the experience. So in this case of logging microphone, they're selling you the ability or the promise of becoming a vlogger. If you go look at their marketing material, it's people, you know, successful people bring around their camera, happy, you know, filming themselves, you know, popping YouTube channels, popping Instagram, whatever. It's all the microphone is, is just a vehicle to get you what you really want, which is to be successful in, you know, in this case of a microphone, a vlogging microphone, being a successful vlogger. You can think of it from, um, this is one brand that I really, really love and I totally have like fallen in love with their marketing uh, materials and their, their way of doing their branding. It's this clothes company, clothing company called Filson, F-I-L-S-O-N. You can go look them up on Instagram and see how they market. So, you know, you could go out and buy some winter gear, buy a jacket, buy some, you know, a, a, a you know, thermal shirt or heavy jeans or whatever. And you could go to Walmart and get that stuff for cheap, but you could also go over to Filson and look at their winter gear. And they're selling you an experience. Their branding is very heavily geared towards people in the outdoors, the rugged individualism, the rugged man and woman out there just, you know, taking life by the horns and, you know, living out there in the wild. And they do a great job of connecting you to the story. So the product is almost irrelevant. Yeah, you're looking for a jacket, but why are you going to buy that jacket that's three times more than the one at Walmart that you can get? Well, it's about the story that's attached to it and the person that you could be by purchasing that thing. And so that's what I mean when it, it the idea is to set up a funnel to Im implant an idea in somebody's head about what the end result is going to be or the experience of working with you or the experience of buying your product what that could make them as a person or how that's going to change their life that's how you want to connect the story it's not about the actual product that product is just a vehicle to get them to what they really want which is the end end product or end experience so guys the thing i'm trying to say here is story sells your story. You need to start spending a lot of time thinking about who you are, communicating your personal story in your brand, attaching a feeling or an experience, an air, an air of high-end luxury experience that comes with your brand. It's not just about the photography, and if it were, then you're just going to be competing on basically price with everybody else, you know, competing for the scraps. You know, one thing that really sets Sarah and I apart and the things that we really focus on is the experience of working with us and letting that message propagate through other clients. So like when we're on site with people, ex I've said this in a million videos, extreme customer service is exactly what we go for. And not only extreme customer service, but an extreme comfortable and good experience. We spend time making sure that we're interested in our couples. We make time making sure that we're making them feel comfortable, that we're laughing with them, that we have a set up process from when we meet them the first time to where by the time we start pulling out their cameras, they're having fun. It's, it's a whole experience with it because let's face it, photography can be awkward. It can be weird. And a lot of people, you know, f clam up when they get in front of the camera. Just the idea of being in front of the camera gives them anxiety. So if you can quell that, that is part of the whole story of you that they're going to communicate later on. These people, you know, and, and that's the thing. Our brides and our couples, they would literally like, you know, just they would go out of their way to tell somebody about the experience of working with us and it's not even just the photos they're set they're secondary you know sarah and i you know we have experience shooting photos and, but we're not like legendary photographers i mean you know I, I i like my work i make about five or six photos every single year that i'm really super proud of um you guys can check our portfolio and go check out the instagrams and stuff like that and see what we're doing but i don't think that we're some like cutting there's a lot of other wedding photographers that are better than us but we've connected ourselves to a story and that's what separates us and sets us apart. People know about us as, as husband and wife. They know about our story, about how we eloped into the Colorado mountains and got married, you know, in the Rockies. And it, we got married at the same hotel that, you know, Stephen King wrote The Shining. And it's, we communicate all that stuff first to these people and they fall in love with the story and they feel comfortable with the brand and price becomes a secondary matter. You know, there's a, 
there's a story that I, I wanted to say, I, I want to talk about here. There's a story about Picasso, right? He was at a cafe in, in Paris. I don't know if this is true, but I've just read it on the internet and it seems like it is. But he, the story goes, he was in a uh, cafe in Paris and he wrote, or he was just sitting there having coffee and some woman recognized him, came up to him and said, hey, I'm a, such a huge fan of you. Will you please just take this little napkin and just draw a quick sketch on it and sign your name? And he said, yeah, no problem. So he, he drew a quick ske sketch of a bird on it and signed it and then put it, uh, handed it out to her. And as she was going to take it, he said, that'll be $10,000. And she was just like, you know, aghast. And she looked back, she's like, what do you mean $10,000? It just took you a minute to draw. And he said, no, that's taken me my whole life. And I thought that that was such a perfect encompassing thing there of exactly what I'm trying to say. Because Picasso was not selling the piece of paper with the sketch on it. He's selling the whole story behind it. All those years that it took to build up that brand and that and that story and that whole connection that would make somebody want to come and stop them in a cafe and ask them for a sketch on a napkin, that is the value. It's not the actual amount of time that went into it. It's not the actual product. That's all secondary. And I think that we need to start thinking about our brands and our businesses that way. Now, guys, this is not like a, a quick, hey, I'm going to give you five different you know, tips to, to do this and it'll work for you. And in six months, you're going to be charging $10,000 a wedding. No, this is a process, but it's something that you need to start thinking about in separating yourself from your competition now from the beginning. So... How are you going to do this? Okay, because like I said, this is not easy. Now, first of all, what you want to do is when somebody comes into your brand and they come in contact with your brand first off, you do not want to discuss and this is our this is our opinion, okay? I'm sure other people are doing it different ways, but this is what's been working for us. The price should not be the first thing that the person is interacting with. The first thing should be your story. The first thing is trying to maybe pre-qual the clients and my, finding out if that person is somebody that you want to work with. You know, we, we tell all our clients right off the bat, even a lot of times before we discuss pricing, is we don't work with everybody. Every client that comes to us, we don't take every single person because there is some brides and some couples that just are not going to work with what we're trying to do. And that creates an air of... Uh, exclusivity with these people that they know that hey we're, we're not just gonna like take on anybody we need to find the right type of couple that can work with us and can you know lead to a situation where really good photos are gonna happen or the really good photos would be inevitable and that's not like a stuck-up thing saying that oh we're so great it's that it's the truth it's we want elite level clients that not only with you know the price range but also people who are willing to you know step outside the boundaries of traditional wedding photography who are really interested and focused on the photography and who really value it so we we give them a list of questions in the beginning we pre-qualify our customers too so we ask them hey what exactly are you looking for what is it about our work that you actually like what are some things that you don't like you know, um, have you ever, um, do you guys ever go to art museums? Do you guys, are you guys interested in different forms of art? Have you ever been in front of the camera before? We ask these people these questions. And so it gives that level of exclusivity and a pre-qualification to some of these clients. So we go, uh, we, we, we also want to build trust with them. And so when they see us and they come in contact with the brand, they know that there's a level of trust. We're not just some people, you know, just saying we're great. We want other people to see it. So if you look at, you know, uh, what people have written on our website, we put, you know, all testimonials and things like that because it adds that level of trust. Also, scarcity is really good. To let people know from the beginning that you only book a certain amount of work from the beginning. You know, and, and that has to be true, obviously. I mean, if you're, I, I think that um, it, that you should not lie, obviously, to anybody. So you, if you want to commit to this, this style or this approach, limiting yourself and letting people know that you limit yourself in terms of the work is very, very smart because it creates an era of scarcity. So that can create motivation, obviously. But those are just some of the things, guys, that we 
kind of build our brand towards and you know, take the funnel from people who, you know, it's like a big funnel. We get a ton of inquiries. Sarah and I, you know, we usually get, you know, two to three a day and we filter all those through our pre-qualification. They, if they've gone through the website and they've looked at all our photos and they've looked at all the, you know, parts of it, they've talked to other people, they've, you know, they've, they've heard about us before they we're, we don't advertise price until we've had a few conversations with them through email. So if the first question through email is, hey, how much do you charge? We always throw the highest price out, out at them. We just always do because chances are that's not the client that we want, okay? So like I said, you want to have the story first. You want to try and brand yourself with a feeling of the end product or what that product could provide for you. Put yourself on a higher level. And then what's going to happen is, and, and this isn't, you're not going to book all the perfect clients or the high-end clients from the beginning. Okay? You're, you're just not. This is a sifting process. And what's going to happen is you're going to start to get really high-end clients, people who identify with your brand that start to trickle into the funnel. And then what you need to do is when those clients book with you or those clients come to you, you need to hyper focus on A, what made them come to you and B, focus on their circle of friends and their circle of contacts. Because the thing is, is if one really high end client books you, they're going to be, chances are they're going to be surrounded by other people just like them. So you want to make sure that their experience with you is absolutely flawless. And I mean, I'm talking about incredible speed with follow-up emails, incredible reliability with what you say you're going to do, incredible attention to detail, incredible customer service, and, you know, just feeling of a good presence on the job. If you do that and you contact, you know, get in contact with, with those people in any way you can, those circles will start to build. And then more and more people will come to you from those contacts. And that's what I mean. You want to hyper focus in on the type of clients that you want. Do not be the ones that are in there scrapping around for price because it's not, it's in competing on price because it's not a game that you want to play and it's not a long-term strategy. And it's definitely not a strategy that doesn't come with like, it's going to come with a bunch of stress because you're never going to have enough money. You're never going to have enough time. And you're always going to be dealing with people who want things for free. You want the clients that are willing to pay and they get that perceived value as soon as they come into in contact with your brand like okay this is a high-end product you know I'm prepared to pay um, you know because I know I trust this brand and I know that the experience is going to be a great one so guys I really hope that this was helpful to you if it was you know uh, you know, I appreciate the Patreon subscribers and all that stuff. You guys are absolutely great. Um, everybody who's in the chat room, in the Discord, all the Patreon members, it's you guys have been just freaking awesome. It's really fun to uh, interact with everybody. So I just want to say thank you again. And if you have any questions on this stuff, any at all, drop them in the comments. I'm very active there, and I will help you guys in any way I can. So until the next video, my friends.